Welcome to Inside Southern California. I'm Bruce W. Cook. Our show today is about the relationship of man to horse. In fact, the horse is more a Native American than any human being on the planet. Our relationship with horses dates back literally thousands of years in the lexicon of humanity and its relationship to the beast that has been our transportation. Only in the last century, really, since the advent of the automobile and, and advanced technology, have we humans sort of lost touch with the relationship with our horses. Did you know that America still has a large number of wild mustangs roaming the plains of our country? Unfortunately, the number is dwindling, they are not protected, and it is an issue that is of great concern to my guest who you're going to meet in just one moment. So stay with me, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to explore the world of ancient historic America and its relationship from man to horse. I'll be right back. Explore her grandeur. Appreciate her beauty. Protect her for tomorrow. We all share the responsibility for protecting nature and preserving the environment for future generations. You can help by recycling your old rechargeable batteries. Call 877-2-RECYCLE or visit us online at calltorecycle.org to learn where you can recycle your old rechargeable batteries. Please answer the call to recycle. We're back. This is Inside Southern California. I'm Bruce W. Cook. My guest today has been before the United States Congress pleading her case. She travels the country speaking wherever and whenever possible about the issue of saving the wild mustangs of America. Her name, Madeline Pickens, and here she is on the show with her dog, Tommy. I asked Madeline if she had horses in the parking lot. She said yes. I asked her to bring them in, but we thought better of that. Madeline, welcome to Inside Southern California. Thank you so much for having me on your show. You and Tommy. Uh, Tommy is a rescue. I just rescued him three months ago. I was surfing online, and I found him online, and I've been lucky enough that he has totally blessed me. So I feel very, very fortunate. And I'm, I'm quite convinced that he is going to increase our show ratings dramatically if we get a nice close-up of Tommy's face. Not, not too bad. You obviously adore animals and have a great sensitivity to them. What got you into the issue and the cause of protecting wild mustangs in America? Oh my goodness, um, I feel lucky that I found out about it. You know, I immigrated to this country and um, when I was a little girl, I'd go with my father to watch cowboys and Indians and all the Western movies, which he loved. And I grew to love the West and I was born in Iraq and my father was British, my mother was Lebanese, and you know, it was after the war, and there was this incredible dream, there was America that you could go to. So as soon as I could, I came to America, I immigrated here, and I was so sure I was gonna meet John Wayne. We would fall in love and that would be it, and I would you know, run off on a horse with him and um, would have this incredible life, live on the Ponderosa, of course, none of that happened. Well, no, I got to interrupt you because you did meet John Wayne of sorts. I have to share with our guests that Madeline is the wife of legendary oil man T. Boone Pickens, who is now the champion of clean energy in America. So having said that, continue. I did. I Please found my own John Wayne. You're, you're right, right. You're right. Boone <laughs> is my John Wayne, and I, I've been so blessed. I, I can't thank him for everything he's done for this country. And he's inspired me. You know, like when I came here, and I didn't see the West, I, I started to say, well, better go to Disneyland. Maybe that's where I'll find the West. And uh, then there was uh, Hurricane Katrina, and I went down to um, Louisiana and worked with a lot of the animals down there and evacuated them. And I started to meet so many people that worked with animals. And this lady came up to me and said, would you help me? Um, stop the slaughter of horses. I said, what are you talking about? Because I was in the horse business. Naturally, I was in horse racing. And I'd never heard of horse slaughter. Found out all about it. Went to 
Boone and asked him if he would testify in Congress, which he did. And I think he must have testified very well because it passed the House, did not get to the Senate. And they, they remind me really in a way of a bunch of hyenas or, or uh, jackals. You know, they'll let it get through the House because they're laughing at you. They won't let it get to the floor. They've got it controlled. Talk about what it was that you were trying to accomplish. What was the bill about? Well, to stop the slaughter of horses. And who exactly uh, is slaughtering them and what is happening and where is this taking place? Okay, this, well, in 1998, we used to slaughter horses in California. We slaughtered up to 300,000 a year. In 1998, there was a referendum. The slaughterhouses were closed. The people of California did not want to do it. Everybody said, what will happen to these horses that are unwanted? Well, it went down to 100,000 from 300,000. And I can tell you this, there wasn't 200,000 horses running around the streets of San Diego, Sa Sacramento, Sac San Francisco. You know, what we found out was 34% of them were stolen. And the rest just, you know, had a home. They had a place to go to. So slaughter ended here, but not in the rest of the country. We ended up by closing the ones in Texas because of my husband, and then legislators had worked on uh, getting it closed, and I was delighted. And then the governor of Illinois closed the one plant there. They're now going across the border to Mexico, and it's a terrible death. I'm not going to get into it, because it, I, I don't think your viewers want to hear that side of it. But we need to stop it, and there is a bill in Congress, uh, H.R. 503, which would stop the transportation of horses for slaughter. When I found out about that is when I realized they were gathering Mustangs and they were going to slaughter. And I said, my gosh, here's my dream, the wild Mustang, and they're slaughtering them? There's something wrong with this picture. Were they, are these horses slaughtered for financial gain? Is it all about money? It's always about money. I guess it is, isn't it? So it's, you know, whoever is doing the slaughtering is making money. Are they paid by the government to round them up and slaughter them? Or is, there, is it private industry? I don't know. Well, it really is private industry. The slaughterhouses were owned by the French and the Belgians, so there were no Americans that would lose money by closing the slaughterhouses down. And very few people worked in the slaughterhouses, and uh, they found there was a lot of illegal aliens working there too. So it really wasn't going to hurt anything by closing them down. Um, and nobody really knows about this. This is a very big issue that I would say if you went out in the street and asked 10 people, are you aware that we Americans are slaughtering wild horses, they would say, what? I didn't even know there were any. That's what I said. When I found out, I said, but that's barbaric. You we know, just lost Tommy. That's, he's busy, <laughs> though. He's going to check out your studio. <laughs> My apologies. That's all right. And um, nevertheless, what it led me to were the Mustangs and the tragedy of this history. You know, 100 years ago, we had 2 million Mustangs roaming on the plains. Two million. We're down to the last, according to the BLM, Bureau of Land Management, 30,000. There's still 30,000 roaming out there. And where are they primarily roaming? What part of the country? Uh, mostly in, in the West. 50% of them come from Nevada. But 30,000, I, I think, is almost extinction from two million. Now, I understand that you and your husband have purchased large parcels of land to preserve for these horses. Is that correct? Um, I'm, I'm under contract, and I'm a little reluctant to talk about it because it's such a political issue. And, uh, you know, ranchers and cattlemen are not excited about this because they don't really understand the plan. I think if they understood it, they'd, they'd come around and, and feel pretty good about it because it would be a fenced-in sanctuary where I, I'd like to create an eco-sanctuary where you could bring your children, campers, log cabins, let's create a historic museum. It would be a living museum where families come. You can stay in a log cabin during the day. You know, you can go on an overnight trip on a log, you know, on a um, covered wagon, have dinner at night under the stars. You'd have cowboys to tell you stories, historians to tell you about the West. I want to sign up. I think people would love that. I really do. Not mm -hmm. just to be gratuitous to what you're trying to do. It's something mm -hmm. that I think American families would adore. I mean, it's a living kind of experience of the Wild West. Madeline's Wild West re re recreated. Why do ranchers not want it? What is the objection? Is it something to do with the cattle ranges? Or 
and if I may be blunt, do they think there's a political motive because your husband is so much involved in energy that this land is being purchased to be used to drill for natural gas? Oh, I think that was one of the spins they had put on it originally. <coughs> she just wants the land because her husband's going to put up windmills or solar, and that's totally untrue. Um, so that spin went out the window when they realized that, you know, as they raised the price of the land because they knew my name, they realized I wasn't going to purchase it. You know, you have to try to do the best deal. When the government tries to do something, they always spend too much money doing it. So let private industry do it. You know, we have to make payroll. If we can't make payroll, we go bankrupt. We go to jail. So we have to make it work. We don't want to go to jail. <laughs> no. no, we don't. So if you can pull this off, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word, would this land be in Nevada, may I ask that, or Wyoming, or where, where would this happen? It really should be in Nevada. Uh, Secretary Salazar has asked us to do it in the, uh, on the east or, you know, closer to the east. These horses are not indigenous to that area, and they've roamed for many, many years on very little forage, and I can assure you they're incredible. They're, they're not fat, they're not skinny, but boy, they are strong and powerful animals, and they really know how to take care of themselves. They roam 50 miles a, a day. Incredible. I want to hear more about the horses and how they survive. When we come back, we're going to take our first break. Ladies and gentlemen, Madeline Pickens, Saving Wild Mustangs in America. I'm Bruce W. Cook. Stay with me. for the fashion show. We went from what to look my best now. Jenny, Jenny, we started our book report. Here's the cover. Yeah, now all we need is a beginning, a middle, and an end. Jenny! Jenny, Jenny! Jenny, 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 Jenny. Hi, honey. Are you feeling blue? What's wrong with being blue? Well, where should I start? <laughs> if you're a teen dealing with stress, there's help. Visit the Will Rogers Institute website for a free booklet about teen stress and how you can de-stress your life. Right. You're looking for Frank? You just missed him. He's out running. Frank, exercising. Can you believe it? You're here to see Mr. LeBeau? He's not available. He is doing his Tai Chi right now. An exercise program that challenges muscles and improves balance not only increases bone health and quality of life, it increases life. He's probably pumping iron. Oh, what's with the big knife? Spot me, will ya? Weight-bearing activities build bones at any age, so live stronger and live longer. To get started on your bone-friendly exercise program, visit orthoinfo.org. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. You know, a little calcium wouldn't kill you. That's check. I'm Bob Costas, and I've been broadcasting sports for a long time. Much of what I do is ad-libbed, but still, one of the most important aspects of my job is being able to write. Narrations, essays, commentaries, it's essential to express those thoughts and concepts clearly and concisely. Good writing is essential for almost any career. And with today's advanced technology, the National Commission on Writing reports that the need to write well has never been more important. Writing is everybody's business. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. This is Inside Southern California. I'm Bruce W. Cook with Madeline Pickens. We're talking about wild horses in America and what we are doing or not doing to preserve our own very own heritage with this animal. Madeline, we talked before the commercial about uh, how these horses have survived for so many years and how strong they are. Your last comment was that they roam 50 miles a day, perhaps more. What do they eat? What do they live on?